good evening guys this is dr paul and uh, once again thank you very much for tuning to our channel this evening before i go further i want to encourage you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net and uh, where you have we have posted so many videos for your benefit tonight i want to talk a few minutes about osteoporosis and vertebral compression fractures osteoporosis is a very common condition in the united states you see let me give you some introduction most of the bone in our in our bodies is completed between 16 and 25 years of age and after 25 years of age there will be so much bone resorption so the bone strength decreases by year after year and especially in women after the menopause like 10 15 years after the menopause this becomes a very very risk factor because of the lack of estrogen and also the environmental factors like uh, chronic calcium deficiency or excessive alcohol intake or hyperparathyroidism these are the environmental risk factors for osteoporosis beside estrogen deficiency in postmenopausal woman now the most frequent manifestation of osteoporosis is uh, vertebral compression fractures like 700,000 people get this in the United States every year but fortunately this problem is asymptomatic most of the compression fractures do not cause pain and patients with the symptomatic vertebral compression fractures they will have pain and some people may end up with a spinal cord compression that results in excruciatingly painful condition they would run to the emergency room where they need narcotics like percocet or lortab or dilaudid or morphine so this is a condition very very common and often it is called derageous hump because the spine the thoracic spine shape changes it is used to be like this it becomes like this that is called derageous hump the family calls you because they see that in their family members and i mean the elderly in the family now coming to imaging we start with the uh, plain radiographs plain radiographs are important to see the structure of the skeleton either anterior posterior or posterior anterior or lateral radiographs are useful then dexa scan the dual energy x-ray absorptiometry dexa scan is most useful to see the bone density in these patients because of two reasons number one it has a very high precision number two it exposes the patient to very minimal radiation but for those two factors we use dexa scan very often because it is very useful to estimate the bone density and also the single energy x-ray absorption metry sxa is also useful then computer tomography and the radiographic absorption metry they are also very very useful things now the other thing these fractures they are not just osteoporosis there is another sinister cause for this fractures that is malignancy whenever an elderly patient comes with to you with vertebral fractures beside osteoporosis you should also think about malignancy and mri the magnetic resonance imaging is a very useful study to differentiate the fractures that are due to osteoporosis and the fractures that are due to uh, malignancy so do not hesitate to order an mri in these patients whenever you suspect and uh, whenever you are confronted with a situation to differentiate the fractures that are due to osteoporosis from fractures that are due to a malignant condition because malignancy is such a notorious cause for these fractures and also the bone biopsy also helps most often we take a bone biopsy from the iliac crest and uh, that helps these patients actually to make uh, come up with an early diagnosis now let me talk a few minutes about the treatment the treatment you see the best treatment is always the prevention 
that is has to be stressed every patient who is uh, crossing from middle ages to the elderly ages we should tell them the importance of maintaining their bone strength and giving them vitamin d's from early ages like 2000 international units every day and uh, stressing them the importance of maintaining their calcium levels investigating them for uh, uh, any uh, vitamin D deficiency and also giving them uh, more and more advice on these things. The other thing I want to mention is uh, um, advising these patients to stop s smoking. Now giving calcium is a good idea, vitamin D and calcitonin and estrogen. Estrogen replacement should be done. If the woman doesn't have a family history of breast cancer or thromboembolic disease or a uterine disease, she should be offered with estrogen. And if estrogen is contraindicated, you can also think of calcitonin. And now we have some early evidence that PTH, parathyroid hormone, is also useful in these patients and uh, it's not at approved. But FDA has approved bisphosphonates. You see this uh, alindronate and the pamidronate and all these bisphosphonates. These are FDA approved medications and you can encourage your patients to take bisphosphonates. But the fact is even bisphosphonates only give a minimal minimal increase in the bone density now when you treat these patients medically uh, if the patient have a lot of pain offer them narcotics like uh, um, Lortab or Percocet or Morphine to load it, but if it is more than six month, six weeks or six, and it is prolonged pain, which patient cannot get relief from these medications, you should advise these patients for kyphoplasty or vertebroplasty. You should consult neurosurgery or orthopedic surgery to do these vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty. These two are very very important things. Basically, what happens is into these compression fractures they introduce a cannula and through that cannula they give bone cement and that bone cement it goes to the those uh, cracked surfaces and it fills that uh, surface and uh, it heals up that fracture so vertebroplasty and uh, kyphoplasty they have excellent symptomatic relief and uh, they are being more and more used and the PMMA bone cement that is used in these procedures it is uh, uh, neurotoxic and it is a good thing because these neurotoxic substance when it is applied into the vertebra it kills the pain fibers and also the heat that is used being the, du during these procedures it kills these basic pain fibers and gives a lot of relief to this patient. So try oral analgesics first and if it does not work go for vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty through an orthopedic consult. That's the important thing you need to do. Now that's about osteoporosis and vertebral compression fractures. Many of you have asked me what is the good book for USMLE clinical skills. I recommend this book this is usmla smasher and this is a wonderful book it's available on amazon bands and noble and borders wherever books are available on online and uh, read this book usmla smasher it's just 19 dollars why i am recommending this book is many people buy very very expensive courses they go to expensive places where they spend thousands and thousands of dollars but I think all you need is uh, common sense and uh, time management to do everything interview and a physical examination in 15 minutes and this book is extremely useful USML is smasher and uh, I recommend because this is the book I studied when I took the examination. So those of you who are taking USML clinical skills examination, get this book and uh, I put like three weeks and uh, I passed and uh, I am I am also, I am not a genius, I am just an average guy. So this book will be very, very useful for you. So USML is smasher 
and get this book and start studying thank you very much have a nice day